ladies and gentlemen, welcome Joy Calloway. I remember the day I decided that it was time for me to start dating again after my divorce. It was Friday, October 28th, 2016. My college BFF, Tracy, was in town. It was homecoming weekend, go blue. And we decided we would start the weekend at the Twisted Storytellers at the Charles Wright. It was my first time being there. After the first act, um, the person to my left reached over the empty chair next between us and tapped my shoulder. Excuse me, ma'am, what did you think? I looked at him and said, I liked it. And I went back to the show. Well, ultimately, throughout the show, between acts and eventually all through the show, he tapped my shoulder, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am, and he would strike up a conversation. At some point, I got a good look at this man. And so when Tracy said, girl, what does he want? Why does he keep bugging you? I said, I don't know, but he's fine. So let's just let this play out. <laughs> so let me tell you something. Fine is my love language. Yes, I love acts of service and words of affirmation, but I speak fine. And this fine was 6'2", about 210, strapping chest, well-attended biceps and quads, caramel colored skin, beautiful, big, deep set eyes. His cheekbones were so high they needed their own boarding pass. His lips were so thick. Children might tease him, but grown ass women, <laughs> we would just clutch our pearls and think, oh Lord. And that hair, shoulder length locks, nothing dreadful about them. I mean, fine. He ignited all the sapiosexual aspects of me. He was well-read, he was well-traveled. We talked politics and religion, spirituality, world affairs. We love to tease each other about grammar and syntax. I know you didn't just dangle a participle. <laughs> and we talked about race a lot and race relations. You see, he had married and I've been married to and had two children uh, with a white woman. And so we talked race a lot. And I neglected to tell you that all that good looking, that spiritual feeling I got when he was around, I decided I was going to call him Black Jesus. But he wasn't just cerebral. Black Jesus was funny. He was actually silly. He was like, he was a smart ass. He was a big ass kid, a fine kid but a big ass kid, we laughed a lot. It brought joy to my soul. And he was also like a, a, a knight in shining armor kind of dude. He was big hearted and chivalrous. He was a gentleman. He was, he was my safe space. When the world was crushing in on me, I could just call and say, hey babe, I need to come by and just lay on your chest and sometimes just cry. And I tell you, just laying in his arms, oh, he liked to squeeze and his smell and that hair and those lips. His hands on my face and on my body, it was just amazing. And did I mention, ladies, he was uh, 10 years my junior? Over time, Black Jesus developed a relationship with my close girlfriends and my immediate family. We would go on uh, family dinners together. He was with us on a lot of holidays. And of course, the perfunctory movie after the holiday dinner, he was there. He ended up exchanging funny memes and would help my daughter Vashti, a college kid, with her homework. And every once in a while, he would just come by my parents' house and, and just hang out with them, elderly folk, and just sit around my dad had dementia and he didn't remember much, but he remembered his time in the army. So he and black Jesus would swap stories about their time in the military. It was so cool to watch. Friends and family alike would marvel and mention that he was very attentive to me and very affectionate. He was really into PDA. He liked to hug and touch and hold. It was awesome. <laughs> Black Jesus traveled a lot for work domestically and internationally. And we, I always had his itinerary. And so we would make sure to align our world clocks and our time zones. So we would always get our talk time in. 
every now and again, uh, he would go ghost. And two days, three days, sometimes four days, no texting, no calling, no sending articles and podcasts by email. It was mildly irritating, but I never, I never made a big deal out of it. In early 2019, I noticed that our uh, physically intimate time started to wane. We'd still talk on the phone a lot. He would call and text all the time, but that was a little bit less as well. But definitely our physically intimate time started to taper off. And quite frankly, I was, I was actually okay with that. I, um, I loved Black Jesus and I knew he loved me. And my spirit knew that his purpose in my life had been fulfilled. You see a twice divorced, mildly depressed, curvy, 48 year old woman who had been cheated on by her husband really needed a fine. I did say he was fine, right? 38 year old who couldn't seem to stop calling or texting or touching or kissing me. That was exactly what the doctor ordered. On July 1st, 2019, 6.36 p.m., I got an anonymous Facebook instant message. It was a wave and a picture of Black Jesus and a white woman. And uh, it said, do you know? And sh she said his government name. And I said, yes. And of course I said, why? She said, he's my husband. No disrespect, but I wanted to know if you were the joy that he had mentioned dating. Well, I'm kind of a smart ass myself. So I said, well, congratulations. When were you married? Surely it had to be earlier this year, that year, right? She said, July 22nd, 2016. That was like three months, almost to the date that the, excuse me, ma'am, tapping had begun. I was tripping a little bit, but I took the high road and I said, uh, okay, well, that's my mother's birthday. So hopefully you all have a wonderful, wonderful marriage. And she then started asking me all these leading questions. You all met at a museum, right? Like at a storytelling event, right? He was with his mom. You were with your mom, right? <laughs> I still haven't told Tracy they think she was my mama, but I'm going to. I decided I wasn't answering her questions and I just brought the conversation to a close. I said, well, thank you for reaching out. Congratulations on your marriage. He's a big hearted guy with lots of secrets. You enjoy that. Bye. And I put a little heart emoji, send. And then I went right over to WhatsApp where Black Jesus and I like to communicate. I copied the picture of the two of them and put it in the message. And I said, mm, just had quite the combo with your, in all caps, wife. Now get her off my ass. She's asking me questions she should be asking you. And oh, by the way, spilling all the tea about the team of women you date, send. His response, your point. I never said we were dating. And I never said you were the only person I was having sex with. As a matter of fact, when was the last time we even had sex? <laughs> I was incredulous. I was hot as fish grease. I said, wow, that's your response to me? You see, Black Jesus didn't handle me like that. He didn't talk to me like that. I said, I just don't believe this. This is what you have to say. And then, I'm not proud of this. I went straight eight mile of Schaefer in all caps. Get your bitch off my ass and out of my Facebook IMs. Send. You know what he responded? I can't control her. Y'all, 
I was in shock. I was in disbelief and the floodgates opened. I promise you for the next four days, I was inconsolable. I could not stop crying. I was, I was reeling from the sucker punch. Not so much that our relationship was clearly now going to be over, but, but, but just the betrayal. How did I miss this? How did I not know he was married? I started to question everything about him, about me, about my value, about how he felt about me. Just the, the questions wouldn't stop. The tears wouldn't stop. I couldn't remember if I had even asked him if he was married. I still can't remember if I asked him if he was married. In the wee hours of July 5th, I got up to go to the restroom. And as I walked back by my nightstand, I glanced over at my phone. It had like 25 notifications, which was odd for all that, for that, that uh, hour of the morning. So I picked up my phone and I started flipping through. And lo and behold, Mrs. Black Jesus had gone on my personal and my professional Facebook pages and put snapshots of my eight mile and Schaefer tirade, the one I told you about and the ones that I didn't. And she would add commentary. She would put them all on my pages. So for example, on one of my posts where I talked about having offered a workshop on the myth of the angry black woman, she said, like this angry black woman. And she put the screenshot, my get your bitch screenshot on my, one of my pages. And then on another page, I, I was talking about the, the, my, my mission to uplift and empower women and to pour into them. And she said, and how do you uplift and empower women by sleeping with their husbands. And she put some more screenshots. Is that how you uplift women? Y'all, I was apoplectic. I was frantic. I was crazy. It was like, this is a Rebecca De Mornay moment. I'm scouring both pages and trying to erase and block and clean up. And I called him and of course he had blocked me. And I even went to the extent of sending a screenshot of one of her messages. And I sent it to his mother with whom I had developed a relationship. I said, please, call your son, make this stop. This is like my life, my livelihood. This is my image. This is my paycheck. On July 6th, I decided to keep a week's long promise that I had made to a friend of mine, another fine ass man named Sean. I promised him that I would meet him for drinks and live music. A business colleague of mine of ours was performing. I didn't want to go. I was I looked like somebody who had been crying for four days because I was somebody who had been crying for four days. My eyes were puffy. He said, you promise I'm a woman of my word. I went down to the MGM for the show. I told him what had happened. He said, listen, you need to call this woman. You need to have a conversation with her. You have to straighten this out. Get her together. You or your brand cannot afford for this foolishness. So on the way home in the Uber, at 10.30 that night, I picked up my phone, I unblocked her off Facebook, and I said an in instant message, I would not have engaged your husband had I known he was married. That's not who I am. And those words began an eight hour marathon messaging session between Mrs. Black Jesus and me, the other woman perhaps not unlike the other woman who had ruined my marriage four years prior. That was a difficult exchange, but at some point during that session, I decided that I was going to offer her that which I had not had when I was the betrayed wife. I wanted answers. I wanted closure. And so every question she asked me about my relationship with her husband, I answered completely when and where and how often she asked about the trips we had taken together. She asked about the gifts that he had bought, many gifts he had bought for me because she saw them, I guess, on a credit card receipt. By 6.30 the next morning, she had her closure. I had given her the gift of closure and now I wanted my closure. So I did something that I never thought I would do. I jumped in my car, disheveled, wild-eyed from a lack of sleep in a long eight-hour almost texting session. And I drove to Black Jesus's job. I pulled up at 6.55 right next to his car. He got off at seven, not knowing what I was going to do. 
I called in on the phone line, the 800 number, so he couldn't see the phone, my phone number. And he'd answered like I knew he would. And I said, I'm outside, come out here, we need to talk. You know, he had the nerve to say, who is this? I went right back to Eight Mile and Schaefer. You know who the fuck this is? And I hung up the phone. As mad as I was, as hurt as I was, when he walked through those doors, my heart did what it always did when I saw him. It leapt. Because did I say he was fine? And I loved him. I jumped out of the car and I came around to that side and I just started barraging him with questions. What kind of twisted bullshit do you have me in? Why would you do this to me? Why did you not tell me? He never apologized. He said something like, I never meant for this to happen, but I wouldn't let it let up. I kept saying, "How? why would you do this to me? What did I do to deserve this treatment? You got her messing up my whole life. What have I ever done except treat you with the love and respect worthy of a black king? And on top of it, you know me. The betrayal on top of the betrayal is you have me answering to a white woman about my dealings with a black man. How dare you? I wanted to hurt him. He was very proud. So I called him a miserable piece of shit. And I said, fuck you. And I walked around outside to get in my car. You know, the last words I've ever heard Black Jesus speak, he said, you already did, that's why you're here. In August of this year, I took part with a group of girlfriends in Deepak Chopra's 21 Days of Abundance Meditation. And one of the exercises therein was to write a letter of gratitude to someone who betrayed you. And so surely I knew who that was going to be. It said, though, that before I wrote the letter, I should release and rid myself of all the negative energy surrounding that person. But it didn't tell us how to do that. So being a woman of ritual, I like ritual and ceremony, I uh, grabbed a piece of paper and a red thick marker and uh, I wrote down everything, all the negative, and I just wrote it down in big letters and just everything. And I just poured it out, poured it out. I cried and I was snotting and it was a horrible experience, but I got it out, I got it out, I got it out. And then I grabbed an incense stick of copal. I'm not a sage girl. And I lit it and I stood over the sink and I burned the letter. And then I took that burning copal incense and I walked around every room of my home where black Jesus had been and I copal smoked the room and I said I release all of the negative energy surrounding this man that is in this space and in me and I said that in every room throughout my house and then I allowed that copal incense to burn out and then I was ready to write my letter Chris Today I do what I have never done, write you a love letter, a letter of gratitude and recognition for the powerful and impactful role you played in my life. You, with all that fineness, came into my life and onto me at a time when I felt discarded and left behind. I couldn't believe that someone as fine and as young <laughs> as you would ever find me desirable, sexy, sexable. At the time, I also wasn't so sure that I was lovable. Besides the absolutely amazing sex. Oh, Lord. You made me feel loved, desirable, and beautiful. And on top of the physical aspect, I knew, I knew I had a friend I could count on, be it for midnight rides home from the airport <laughs> or literally a shoulder to cry on. And I truly appreciated all the little gifts that you gave me. You were so much more than my lover. You were my confidant. You were my friend. You were my restorer. I miss you. I miss our talks. I miss our laughs. I miss our stupid inside jokes. I actually miss you jabbing me about my flat white woman behind, which coincidentally you could never manage to keep your hands off of. 
I miss our political discussions. You made me smarter and more inquisitive. You made me stronger, Black Jesus, more confident, more aware of my sexiness inside and out. I have released all of the negative energy surrounding you. I now choose gratitude. I loved you then, I love you now, and I know that you loved me too. I wish you peace, I wish you love, I wish you abundance, and of course, I wish you joy. The betrayal has ended. I now trust myself to move on. Thank you.